Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday. It's good to see you all today. Thank you, Miss Hannah, for being a guest reader on my channel yesterday. Today, we're going to be reading A Visitor for Bear by Bonnie Becker and by Katie McDonald Denton. In this uh, book, Bear feels so so about having visitors, and we'll kind of see that play out. But I want you to think for a second do you like to be around people or do you like to be by yourself? For me, I am somewhere in between. I don't mind being around people, but I need what I call Miss Katie time, where I am just by myself. I just get some time to be just me. So as we're reading this book, I want you to think about, do you resonate more with Bear, where you kind of like to be by yourself, or more with the mouse who likes to be with people? A visitor for Bear. No one ever came to Bear's house. It had always been that way. And Bear was quite sure he didn't like visitors. He even had a sign, no visitors allowed. One morning, Bear had heard a tap, 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 tapping on his front door. When he opened his door, there was a mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. No visitors allowed, Bear said, pointing to the sign. Go away. He closed the door and went back to the business of making his breakfast. He set out one cup and one spoon but when he opened the cupboard to get one bowl, there was the mouse, small and gray and bright eyed. I told you to leave, cried Bear. Perhaps we could have just a spot of tea, said the mouse. Out, commanded Bear. Oh, sorry, said the mouse. I'll be going now. Bear showed him to the door and shut it firmly. Then he went back to the business of making his breakfast. But when he opened the bread drawer for one slice of bread... There was the mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. Unbelievable, rumbled Bear. Away with you, vamoose! I do like a bit of cheese, said the mouse. Bear pointed a rigid claw toward the door. Yes, then, here I go, said the mouse, farewell. And the mouse whisked out the door. This time, Bear shut the door very firmly and locked it tight. He locked the windows too, for good measure. Then once again, he went back to the business of making his breakfast. But when he opened the fridge to get one egg, there was the mouse, small and, and, small and gray and bright-eyed, of course. Be gone, roared the bear. A crackling fire, ventured the mouse. This is impossible, intolerable, insufferable, cried Bear, shaking with anger and disbelief. Terribly sorry, murmured the mouse. Now you see me, now you don't. I am gone. And the mouse looked very sorry indeed while he waited for Bear to unbolt the door and let him out again. This time, before he went back to the business of making his breakfast, Bear shut the door very, very, very firmly. 
locked it, boarded the window shut, stopped up the chimney, and even plugged the drain in the bathtub. Carefully, Bear set about the business of making his breakfast. He opened the cupboard. No mouse. Ah. He opened the bread drawer. Nothing. Phew. He opened the fridge. Mouse free. Yes, indeed. He lifted the lid to the tea kettle. There was the mouse, small and gray and well, you know the rest. Bear fell to the floor and wept. I give up, he blubbered. You win, I am undone. So sorry, said the mouse, but perhaps if I could have just a bit of cheese and a cup of tea, and do you think we could unstop the chimney and have a nice fire? Bear blew his nose with a loud honk. But then you must go, he sniffled. No visitors allowed. You have my word, said the mouse. Bear unshuttered and unboarded the windows, unlocked the door, unstopped the chimney, and unplugged the drain. He brought out two plates of cheese and two teacups, and he made a crackling fire in the fireplace for two sets of toes. The mouse warmed his feet and nibbled and sipped, and Bear did too. They sat for a long while. The clock in Bear's house ticked loudly. Bear cleared his throat. The mouse looked most attentive. No one had ever been most attentive to Bear. The fire is nice, Bear announced. Lovely, said the mouse. No one had ever said Bear's fires were lovely. I can do a headstand, said Bear. Very impressive, exclaimed the mouse. Bear told a joke. The mouse laughed heartily. No one had ever laughed at Bear's jokes before. Bear began to think of another joke. The mouse set down his teacup. Bear quickly lifted the teapot. There's plenty more, he said. So sorry, said Mouse, most kind, but I must be on my way. Really, you needn't go, said Bear. I am off, said the Mouse, springing up from his chair. Wait, cried Bear. But the Mouse stepped out the door. Toodaloo, said the Mouse. Don't go, wailed Bear, throwing his body across the path. But I gave you my word, said the mouse, pointing at the no visitor sign. Oh, that, cried Bear, pulling down the sign and tearing it up. That's for salesmen, not for friends. Not for friends, asked the mouse. Small and gray and bright-eyed, Bear nodded. The mouse's bright eyes glowed brighter. Bear smiled. Do you like one lump or two, said Bear most politely. I like two, said the mouse, and Bear agreed. The end. That was A Visitor for Bear by Bonnie Becker, illustrated by Katie McDonald Denton. So I want you to think about the end of this book, what makes the mouse a good friend?
I think about what makes the mouse a good friend, the mouse was encouraging, and the mouse was a good listener. Today, my challenge for you is to go out and be a good friend to someone else. And also get outside. It's so nice out. Okay, see you later.